commit the deeds and the character of God. They can see what is the imago Dei of God and give praise. The purpose of their seeing it, you understand, is, is, is to give God praise. So there are certain things, you understand, you can do. Now here is a gift. It's only because some of us don't pay attention. Do you know the imago Dei of God teaches you? It, it's intuitive. Not always, as you say, you need somebody to tell you. Naturally, the Holy Spirit tells you, stop doing this. Yes. This hurts this. Leads and directs you. This will limit this. Don't do it this way. Do it, do it this way. Stop saying that. Stop believing that. Stop going there. This is why you're... Christ said, I didn't give you the imago Dei. I just leave you as an offering. I've given you the Holy Spirit to what? We have interaction. The Holy Spirit is an interactive spirit. Does this make sense? Meaning constant feedback. Because he knows we'll mess up the imago Dei. Yes. Like he's working things yes. out. Yes, he knows there are things we won't pay attention to. So he's constantly interplaying with us. Interplay. But you, you, you have to learn to gain. You should. The Bible says in, 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 in 2 Peter 3 18, the Bible says you must grow in the knowledge of what? Of the Lord. You have to grow progressively, getting more familiar with Jesus. Go to 2 Peter 3 18. I think we're probably going to have to stop soon. I can't get as far as I want to get into this. Okay. 2 Peter 3.18 You say amen when you do? <clears throat> but grow in grace that undeserved favor and that grace keep making you grow. It's not that that tells you immediately. It's not necessary you're doing the things to grow. If God is the one growing you. Amen? But growing grace, that undeserved favor, spiritual strength, you'll be given this strength. Amen? And recognition. Amen? And knowledge and understanding of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ the Messiah. To Him be the glory, honor, majesty, and splendor, both now. Amen? And to the days of eternity. Amen. Amen. So it says you must grow in grace. True grace, you must grow in strength, knowledge, and understanding. True grace, you must get stronger at recognizing God and understanding God. Amen. And becoming more knowledgeable. So grace will give you strength to get more knowledge and to what? Get more understanding. More grace, more strength, more knowledge, more understanding. But you should be growing every day. My knowledge of the Lord a month ago and now is radically different, especially a year ago. We're just not in the same league anymore. Yes. You can't be a Christian 10, 15 years and you still look at God the same. This is when he wants to treat you like he did the, the Israelites in what we just read in Isaiah 4, 6. I'm going to take away the knowledge from you. Or like, um, I'm not working with you because you're, you're not getting any better. And I'm telling you, you're not going to be able to go is it in because of the grace that given me strength to get pay attention, to get more knowledge and understand it? No, it's distraction. And there's, a, there's, a, there's one verse I'm going to stop on today. I'll show you why, why we do not grow in grace. Or why aren't we getting stronger to pay more attention, to get more knowledge and get more understanding. There's one reason. One reason, and then we're going to stop. I promise you we're stopping there today. Quickly. Go to Matthew chapter 6. Then we'll rest there today. Matthew chapter 6, 21 to 23. Then, I want, then I'm going to stop your thing. Why are, are some people, some Christian, walk in the Imago Dei very well and some are not? Let's, let's see. When, when there's no growth, you'll become complacent. Yeah. Because there's just no evolution. And, and even worse than the complacent. One, you're blocking God's glory, the, the, the fruits that should be coming, like, like dealing with the death or the cripple. Whatsoever God is sending in your life, that just can't happen unless God's doing it for the people, not because you're operating properly. That part not happening. Amen. So God ain't getting his praise and the people not getting the benefit. Amen. You know, you, you, you become complacent. The, the people not getting no benefit. I'm not sure why we have these. You know, this, I guess if you want to be that way, you should you shouldn't interplay with nobody. So you can go about, Lord, nobody suffers because of me blocking the immaculate. And God, well, then uh, you still can't get around God though. You can't get his glory. You know, you might get it, you might go, I'm not hurting nobody, but place you're supposed to be. You know, the Matthew 5, 48, they're working for you. So God didn't get no glory from you. So it's like, like, why did he regenerate you then? Why did he turn you on? 
Just, Christ said it this way, he goes, who lights a lamp? He said, I put it under a bed or a bush. He goes, no, when I light something, I want everybody to what? See it. Are, are we at the, where am I? But those are the, would be the so you got people who are so-called Christians, you know, imitate, imitators of... Well, they are pretenders, but I believe yeah. most, most are, uh, Zion 4, 6, they're ignorant Christians. They're, they're not, they haven't learned how to walk in grace. We, we preached this a couple weeks ago. They haven't learned how to walk in the Sabbath, to have the strength to pay attention, to get the knowledge and get the but understanding. The Holy Spirit helps you to get should, But we, 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 the Bible says we can grieve Him. We can resist Him. Meaning when He tries to take you, remember wait, the Holy Spirit needs you to focus. It needs you to concentrate. Now, not in your own power. He said, I said, not in your power. I will give you the strength and ability. It's like a kid. A kid has a parent, but they're going to want to tie their shoelaces by themselves. No matter how much you want to help them, mm -hmm. because you see they're messing up or they're not doing it right, they still try to do mm -hmm. it right themselves, mm -hmm. right? The parent, i.e. the Holy Spirit and the child. Yes, so it slows down the process tremendously. You see, because you're right, they're, they're, they're very, we like to resist them. We need, you see, one of the things, we're very prideful. We, we, we overestimate ourselves. I can pay attention. When I hear the word of God, I can pay attention. I can read the Bible. I can pray. I can fellowship. I can commune. Not true! But as grace, none of us can't. Overestimate. Our Overestimate. The, the power of this world, as you will see, the magnets that pulls you out of yourself, it's too great. You need grace power and then we don't know him enough to pay attention. Because you got to know that he is you see? greater than the things of the world. You, you need it. You need it to gain knowledge, to start to make, to, to grow in grace, and to start to understand. You see, without knowledge, you can't what? What are you going to understand? The Bible says you must grow in knowledge in the Son of God. You have to become more familiar with Jesus. Not just as an idea to, practically. Mm -hmm. Practically. Amen. I read Matthew. Matthew chapter 6, as I said, I want to read from verse 21 to 23. Why are some of us not being able to operate under the anointing or the guidance of the Holy Spirit by strength, meaning into knowledge and into understanding? Let's see why. I'm speaking here strictly to Christian. This is not the scripture, does not apply to non Christian. For non Christian, they can't receive the anointing or the strength. They have the same problem. But I'm talking for Christians who have received it. Why are they, why, why is 2 Peter 3, 18 not working? How come their attention is not better? How come their knowledge is not better? How can they be a Christian six months, a year, two years, and they can't even administer the basics? I don't even talk about talking. Their life does not portray the characteristic of the Imago Dei. How is that possible? Let's see why. And what people see of them is the opposite. In Matthew chapter 6 from verse 21, I think I said 21 to 23, read. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. I'll say it different. What you value of your attention. Yes. Yeah. What you value and like and appreciate, it has captured your attention. Now it gets better. That is the Imago Dei you will feature. Whatsoever you treasure, whether it's your friends, your body, your thinking, the food, the culture, that thing has your intention. That thing has you invested. You have invested in it because I so appreciate and like this thing and the thing go good. And as a result, the thing could give me all of your attention. Now that thing you are beholding or preoccupied, you understand, you will feature. Your characteristic, that thing you will... I have a, I have a, a friend, she's one of my staff, and she's a friend of mine. Her husband just opened his own mechanic shop. As you know, opening any business is a daunting task. And now she, she was talking to me about him. She go, I need him to take a day off. He's working seven days. He's working ridiculous hours. He come home for an hour and go back and work. He's just nonstop. And she, goes, she was talking to him, and he go, it's the last thing I think about before I go to bed. And it's the first thing I think about when what? I get up. It's completely what? Consumed. Engaging. It becomes his treasure, and as a result, it has... So, what do you think is the only thing he's featuring? Mechanic shop. What you treasure has your attention. What you have your attention, you're growing in knowledge, and you're gaining more what? Understanding. 
I told you this many times, and if some of you can't do this, I'm telling you already, you're struggling to walk in the anointing. Anything I can focus on, I will gain knowledge, and very soon I'll start to what? Understand it. When I'm failing to grow in knowledge and understanding something, it's because I can't what? I can't pay attention, I can't concentrate on it. Don't, I'm no mechanic, but I guarantee you this. And it's not me, but I've learned this is how the Holy Spirit works. You put me in a mechanic shop and God grant me grace to concentrate. I promise you, I start to gain tremendous understanding through the knowledge I'm gaining. And anytime I can't get knowledge of it, it's because I can't what? I can't focus. I can't concentrate. It's the only reason. I remember I have, I have a sister, she go, I don't know how to cook, how can I cook? I say, you need to spend some time with your mom. Ask the Lord to grant you grace to pay attention to your mother, and you will, you will shortly have to gain her skills. I see, you just need to watch her. But not just watch her. You need the ability to apply focus on what she's doing. Apply your attention. And as you apply your attention, you'll find the knowledge. She called me a couple of days ago, she go, I could cook the thing, mom, that teach me. I, learned, I can't believe I could do it. I'm like, of course. Once you can pay attention and gain the knowledge, you'll gain the what? It's not, you know, sometimes we like to make Christianity mystical. It's not mystical. In fact, that's the very fact that hurts Christianity. Christianity is very clear. It's called, you understand? It's a, it, it, it's a spirituality of light. The Bible says it makes things what? Visible and clear. So how can it have so whole lot of mysterious to it? It won't be visible and clear. And God said, you see, he is the God of what? Truth and light. It should be clear. You need to be able to focus, concentrate on the topic. Why? So you can gain knowledge, insight. Why? So you can understand it. Then after that, you just need obedience. Okay, so you could understand something and don't want to what? Or can't do it. Paul fully understand what he was supposed to do. But then he still finds he can't what? Mm -hmm. he, he, yes. That's a whole different story. So, whatsoever we treasure, valuable to you, Anything and whatsoever, one thing I know it has your attention. One thing I know you're gaining knowledge and you're understanding that thing. Do you understand this? Please be very clear in this. He went on to say, verse 22, the eyes or the intention is the lamp of the body. So if your eyes are sound, your entire body will be filled with light. If the intention or the eyes, that which you're using to behold the thing, like, like Peter and John tell the man, focus on me, look at me. If it is good, then everything in Peter and John will be transferred. If he can't focus properly, he might get part of Peter and John when they carry it or none of it. The, the ability is, can he concentrate? He's still the name. Correct. Can he? If, the, if your concentration, the Bible says, if you are the Bible, Paul said, one thing, and one thing I do with David, forgetting what is behind me. And I laying hold. I want my concentration to be single focus, dove's eye. A dove can only look at one thing what? at a time. Single eyes. Single eyes. Pastor Trump preached a few weeks ago, a dove doesn't have gallbladder apparently. And one of the things gall do, if any of you ever prepare meat and chickens, they have a gall. And, it, and the gall has the ability to what? If you, if you cut it wrong, make the whole meat become what? Bitter. You know, said, a dog don't have that which can make the sanctification become what? Corrupt. So for the eyes to be focused, you need grace or strength that you're not sabotaging your own knowledge and understanding. Church, can you follow me this morning? Come, Father, grant us grace today that we can walk in the anointed properly, in Jesus' name. You need to be, and you a Christian, you're just like a dove. You have the single vision, and you have Jesus with your sanctification, stopping you from putting anything to break what the grace strength is doing, so you can grow in knowledge and grow in understanding. Do you understand this process, sir? Well, the Bible said, your heart, the desires, is what, is what, is what kills you. The desire shifts the eyes and shifts the attention. And when the attention is shift, the knowledge will shift. You'll learn something different. Or you'll learn in part. You got some Christ and some other craziness and you mix them all together and got one crazy chop so we going on. Chi follows whatever. Yeah. Your energy follows your Yes. So the Bible says if the eyes are good, the attention is good. How great is the light? Look at verse 23. But if which this is choice now. 
But if your eyes is on some, your attention is not wholesome, it's in part, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the eyes, amen, what is it? If then the very light in you, the regeneration, your conscience is darkened. How dense is that darkness? Satan, this is what, this whole idea in this world, Satan set up a world man can't pay attention. Because you know, the more you can't concentrate, the greater the darkness will walk. Be in it. When 2 Peter 3.18 is now working, you're not growing in grace, in strength and knowledge and understanding. First of all, you've got to get the prerequisite. Why isn't this happening? Something else has your attention. Why does something else have your attention? Your heart, you have a different treasure. Your heart has a different treasure. When my knowledge is not growing, when I'm not becoming more... Listen, let me tell you how embarrassing this. Because God is the one featuring himself. Is it we who seek God out or is it God who shows himself? Does God come to us or we go to him? He, He's for he comes to you. You don't even have to do you didn't, you didn't love him first. He is the one pursuing. He is the hunter. We are the prey. But he, he's asking the prey to what? Be responsive. Be an interactive relationship. He said, I'm going to give you strength and ability that you can interact what? with me. You see? So God is the one who gives you the strength. And I want to show how shameful this is. God is the one who gives you the strength to pay attention so you can get knowledge and understanding. So when, when you are choosing then, and it is a choice to go, do he's, in, he's regenerate me and give me the Holy Spirit and empower me through the anointing to pay attention to get the knowledge and the understanding and I'm allowing this light in me to get darkened. You understand? This tells me my kind of heart that I have. Mm -hmm. I don't have a heart for God. You know, we're going to talk about this if, 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 if I get a chance. In the 4th century, um, this, this, I see, and I told you it was before. No, he's after Jesus. He's a Christian. And Christianity starts after Jesus. He's in the 4th century. We're in the 20th century. In, in, in the end of the 3rd and the 4th century, there was, there was a Roman Catholic Christian poet called, what's his name? Aurelius Clement um, Prudentius. And he got, there's no higher, um, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Like no higher thing you can do in this life than to seek the truth. You got there's nothing higher than seeking or gaining access to the truth. He said, I thought he said there's no higher goal than love or no truth and righteousness. It, yeah, truth and righteousness. You got there's nothing greater to acquire than truth and righteousness. It's the greatest thing you can do. So um, you got this God who regenerates you and, and strengthening you and giving you the knowledge to know the truth. This is what Jesus said, I'm the truth. It's personal. I'm a person. You see? And to know righteousness. But you love so much other things, you are never growing in knowledge because other things, other treasures, is stealing your attention. Oh, Satan is a thief. All he does, Satan, the, the challenge is Satan understands man mechanism better than him. He goes, the way I'll miss your Lord or the Brianna or Pastor Chuck, they have to be able to pay attention. That's how God made them. Mm -hmm. You understand? That this is how they're going to fill themselves with, with light. You understand? The eyes are the light to the body. So you go, I just need to move that attention. But to move it, I need them to have some other treasure, some other things they like. So all he does is create different things. He would rather you give God none the attention, but if he has no choice, you, go, you can do it in part because then you know your light is mixed with what? Yeah. Darkness. Or sometimes you focus, you focus on pain, sickness. Yeah, yeah all form of darkness. Anything other than God. It's always distraction. It's always distraction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're right. It's not just, uh, thank you, Jim. It's not just the, ple the pleasure side. There's the negative side, too. Anything to get you off of Jesus. Yeah. Your situation, your circumstance, what your mom did to you, what your daddy is, you have daddy is you, you have cultural is you, you have to be black, you're no real, whatsoever. Anything to take the eyes off the source. Mm -hmm. Anything to take you off the Imago Day of Christ's sufficiency. And once he know, you understand, the eyes is moved, then he know the light that's supposed to illuminate through you and around you now become what? Infested or snare with darkness. Yes. And he can get you directly, get to the person yeah. that's with you, that's aside of you. I believe it's why the Lord tells us, be cautious, be careful. You have, I am extremely careful what has my attention. Mm -hmm. I am extremely defensive against what pulls my attention into certain things. You'll find the Holy Spirit treats it like play. Soon as certain things try to grab your attention, you move away from it. You're like, I don't want no part of it. I will not respond. I will not touch it. I will not participate. Period. 
And the reason for that, you don't want the light in you to become what? Darkened. No, not at all. One first thing you steal is God's glory. The second thing you cannot do, remember, someone of us uh, talk was talking about the light in you is when about Matthew 5 40. You know, let it, the Bible said, let it shine before men so other people think it's for others. It is, it is unrighteous for you to be robbing others of what God wants to do for them, the help and the provision and the care. Because you have all this selfish desire that blocking the light and contaminating the light. Part of becoming a mature Christian, you're going to stop that behavior. You're asking the Lord to take away anything that can hinder His glory and helping of the people. And in mature Christian, you say you're not against the people of God, but you want what you want. My wife always said, the heart wants what? What it, what it wants. So you are sabotaging the people and God just to get what? What you want. Christian so called Christian yeah, doesn't It's happening all the time. Yeah. You see? But I, I, I believe a lot of this has to do with lack of knowledge. And the reason they're, they're not growing in knowledge, they just have their heart, just have too many things to love. You see, the Bible says people worship me with their mouth, but their heart are far from me. You know what I mean? If, if, I'm telling you, anytime your Christian experience is not expedited, you have to check your heart, man. Indeed. You have to check your heart. Why can't I concentrate? Mm -hmm. Why? Something else has it. The Bible say, you, you know, narrow is the way. Why does narrow become the way? Because I am keeping the heart very fixated on the highest love, the greatest love you can have in this world. You know what I'm saying? It's the love of truth, the love of Jesus. You see? Do you want to know the truth about yourself? Do you want to know the truth about God? Do you want to know the truth about others? Do you want to know the truth about the world? Do you want the truth about the past, truth about the present, and where are we going? If this become, you become narrow. Indeed. There's certain thing, you know, um, it's not you, it is like Paul said, everything is permissible. You can do just about anything. The question is, is it beneficial? These things you're, you're thinking or want to do, will it keep the light happening? Will it keep the Amarco Day working effectively? Will it capture others' attention? You know, um, I've been working on something personally for a while now. Early in my Christian walk, when I need to grab someone's attention, like I need to speak to them, and I need to, like, 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 I need to spend a lot of time with them, and, 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 like, and like, um, like really try to like, um, almost beat it into them. And as I grow as a Christian, the Lord go, you're only working this hard because you're tarnishing the image. The image works best when, 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 when you grow in let the grace of Christ allow you to concentrate more, that you gain more knowledge and understand. Like what's happening with a little child? If when I'm not paying no attention to nobody, it's still having the same what? Impact. So if I'm focusing on you, it has the impact. And if, if I'm not focusing on you, it's having what? The same impact. Yeah. Does this make sense? But to, to do this, I have to, the more I lose desires of other things, and the Lord become my only desire, the greater the imago they want. Come through. Can you see this, church? Oh, yeah. We refer to this, in, now we, forgive me, Father, well, we, and, but more important, God referred to this as the outpour. The light, and I'll say it different, the light that you regenerate in you is begin to what? Overflow. There's the infilling, you're receiving the light, amen, and you're able to focus on the light and the whole being is illuminated, but at a certain point, that light becomes what? It overflows. And when the light starts to overflow, God can be glorified and others can truly benefit. Others can truly benefit. It, I don't know. You ever see someone or something pass? And, and when I was a young man, you know, um, and, and, and I used to be chasing girls, there's some girls when they walk by, used to turn everybody what? Hey. Whatsoever she's featuring, whether it's her clothes or she's pretty, whatsoever. But one thing I know, it makes heads what? Third. Do you know the Bible is 10 times more powerful than that, or a billion times? When it appears properly and feature, everybody should what? The head should turn. People should want to listen. People should start able to pay attention. People should start to receive the help they need and the provision that is necessary and so forth. Yeah. Does it make sense? Yeah. Now, one of the things I never do to you that sometimes we as teachers don't do, we don't tell the truth in this part. It will cost you. Remember what I said, the secret, uh, now what I said, what the scripture said in, in, in 2 Peter 3.18, to grow in knowledge, you need the strength. What is the cost it's going to cost you? In order for the Imago Dei, the light to be so soft. Yes! 
You have to be separate from all the other things that are pulling you in. Those things have to go. Now you don't even have to try to do it. God himself is going to do the separation, but you have to what? Allow it. Yeah. We have this way, you see, we behave like the, like the ordinary church. When Jesus got, folks, set your heart and mind and be fixated. We go, but I have to go bury my mom first. I have to go say hello to my family and cousins that I used to walk with. You go, you're not worthy of me. You go, if I can't grab your full attention, that your whole being is full of light, go back with your family. You're not ready for me. You're not ready to help humanity. You're not ready for the glory of God. Amen? This is what happened. It's going to cost you. All the things that stand the chance of tarnishing the light has to what? Grow. Has to go, I mean. Yes, it does. It has to go. Anyone tell you different, they're lying to you. They're trying to cheat you or they themselves have not passed through the path yet. I have known no one that has done it. And it didn't what? Cost them. Yeah, it varies the spirit. Peter goes, we have lost mothers and sisters and brothers and wife and children. It cost you. My brother, Pastor Cho, been following me for a long time. And I met him as a man in the world. He did it for me probably over 20 years now. It has cost him. <laughs> he doesn't have the things he has before he was following me. Or the friends. Oh, no, oh, I'm talking, that's all of that I'm talking about. The friends, the people, the things. The, it costs us. To behold and maintain the light cost you. Other man used to drink, used to speak, used to do certain things. It costs you. Because those things are in conflict with what? Light. It's not beneficial to the world. Correct. Now, are they all bad? No. Many of it is permissible. But it's now what? Beneficial to let light be constantly shining to glorify God yeah. and the benefit of all. Sometimes Do you understand this process? Calls, it's like, I don't want to talk about what you want to talk about. It's why some people pull it and go, you didn't tell me the price. Jesus put it this way, you go, uh, people were saying, Lord, I'll follow you, and he told them this parable, you go, you must learn to weigh the costs before you do it. You go, if a man decided to build a house and he didn't weigh the costs or fight a, a war, he didn't decide to have enough money or soldier, and then halfway he can't, people will laugh at him because you did not weigh the cost. I will not cheat you. The Lord will not let me. It will cost you. Things that are interrupting your attention, focusing on the Lord, has to go. Now I am going to tell you this from experience. I think you should suffer the cost. You should let it cost you. The benefit to mankind, this crazy world, and the glory for the imago Dei, the levy, the tribute, that you should be paying. You understand? It's worth any kind of so-called things you're holding on. You have the greatest Imago Dei. You see? That in itself is worth any levy you have to pay. The levy you will pay, it will cost you. You have to praise God and you have to lose the things in conflict with God. The benefit to humanity, which is one of the greatest things you can do with your life. Oh, church, it's worth the cost. It's worth the cost in Jesus' name. I will pay it again and again and again. Amen? What am I going to do? Be a, be, a, be a son of darkness? Be against the, the one who created me? And hurt the people? In everything the lasting life. May the Lord have mercy on us. We're going to stop there today in the name of Jesus. May the Imago day that you have received from the Lord Shine bright that man will praise your Father in heaven. May you be granted grace that you will be able to pay attention intensely. That your whole being will be filled with light all the days of your life. And may darkness never able to protrude or intrude upon the light. In the name of Jesus. In essence, nothing of darkness will ever grab your attention. Not a person, not a thing, not a situation, circumstance, condition. Not positive or negative. Not sad or pleasurable. In the name of Jesus. And for those who have not come into the Lord yet, who know they were made in the image of God and through sin it has become sneer and damage, it is time to be regenerated. Wheresoever you are, it is time for you to receive the Imago Day of the Lord. Get it regenerated. That light can shine through you and your household and your community. That it can be a benefit to your household and your community and to the glory of God. Amen. And your life can be that which it ought to be. The highest life of the Lord intended you to be in Jesus' name. So wheresoever you are, if you want to join your faith with my faith and confess these simple words through believing in your heart that Jesus is the Son of God and God raised him from the dead 
and he is the Lord Jesus, the owner. Amen. And the Christ, the Savior of mankind, that you shall be saved. The image of shall be regenerated. Jesus shall be your sanctification. Sanctification. He shall keep it clean. And he shall give you grace, power to pay attention on him, that you shall fix it and behold it, that you shall grow in knowledge in the Son of God. How did he do it so well? Amen. And you shall grow in understanding, and your life shall be fruitful and effective before God, for your family, community, and before man, in the name of Jesus. And for the church, I always say this out to you. It is time to ask the Lord, if you are struggling with this, to sanctify you thoroughly. That you can have all the grace that He provides for you. That you will grow in knowledge. You will grow in understanding. Meet the height and the stature of Jesus by which you shall be measured in Jesus' name. May the church be effective and fruitful in all area, arena, and rectitude of their life. In every moment, every day, into eternity. In Jesus' name we say, Amen. Amen.